First off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, the mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessors, transmitting masters, lecturers, and everyone here today for this opportunity to learn to talk about uh, this topic, <clears throat> um, establish a correct outlook on life. Actually, should it should really be establish a correct outlook uh, on a Tao cultivator's life. Okay, so. Uh, since it's specifically <laughs> talking about Tao cultivation, okay, so but uh, that's a little bit too long, All right? Um, and also, actually, well, this is uh, for those, well, I guess, who know Chinese. I mean, actually, this 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 topic, I, I'm borrowing or I'm using the material from this transmitter, uh, Tai, um, who uh, some of you may have heard his his uh, classes, which are quite entertaining, although <laughs> my presentation won't be so as such, but, but he has good material. All right. Okay, so let's see. All right, here. So how does the current social environment manifest these pathological conditions? Uh, all right. So basically, you know, we have like our buildings, we're building them taller and taller. Uh, but our, the temple of our heart and soul is getting shorter. Um, so, you know, the, so like, I don't know what, what, what's, I think the current tallest building in the world is in, I don't know, uh, it's in the Middle East. I think it's the Burj Khalifa or something. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, they, they get all these external things that we can build get taller. But, uh, you know, what's the temple of our heart and soul? That's, you can say that that's like, yeah, the, the morality, right? Um, uh, our sense of our spiritual um, uh, sense, I guess, the spiritual nature. <laughs> so that's kind of, it's been neglected, all right? Our, our highways are getting wider, but our heart and mind is getting narrower. Yeah, so yeah, you know, we have super highways, eight lanes or whatever, how many lanes, but, <clears throat> um, you know, our heart and mind, we're getting narrower, getting more, uh, well, we can see that in some places, uh, our people are getting very, very narrow minded, okay. Um, despite the fact that we have all this knowledge uh, and everything that's out there and yet, you know, why, why is this happening? Uh, we spend more money, but we possess less happiness. Um, I think there's a saying that you can't buy happiness, or maybe it's you can't buy love, but <laughs> but yeah, you can't buy happiness either. <laughs> uh, you know, we buy all these things, um, but are we really happy, right? Are we, con are we content, um, happy with what we have? Uh, I guess, you know, the reason we keep buying stuff is because we're not happy, uh, but buying more is not going to help. Uh, our wages increase, but our moral standards decrease, right? So yeah, we make a better living. Our standard of living is increasing, but, and you know, it's all this, oh, so we have all these gadgets, this, all this technology, and yet moral standards are going downhill. Um, we can see that in society today in the, in the US, uh, just this year, there have been so many mass killings, uh, all sorts of stuff going on. And yet, you know, people are arguing. It's like, hey, we need our guns. I mean, I don't know. And anyways, that's another uh, whole other topic. Um, okay. So our academic degrees are getting higher, but our wisdom is becoming more shallow. Uh, yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> Uh, basically, or superficial, shallow or superficial. So yeah, you know, we, we certainly know our knowledge is increasing a lot. Um, we learn a lot more than before. Uh, and we can, you know, uh, pursue these, the academics, uh, the, the, the higher learning, and, uh, you know, so many different areas. But our basic wisdom, is you know, we, we, ne we neglect that, right? We, we're focused on knowledge um, and we're, we, don't, we don't know 
or we don't have that wisdom anymore. Okay, uh, so so that's that's a problem. Now we talk too much about morality, but we perform too little good deeds. Yeah, I mean we do talk about morality. You know, we see all this the bad stuff happening, and so you know we start talking about morality. <laughs> oh, you know, this is things that you know, these these are bad things. You know, these are evil people or or whatever. Um, but we actually don't do enough of the things, the right things, the good things um, that uh, we need to do. Okay, so yeah, we talk about it, but we don't. We talk to talk, but I don't know. We walk to walk. I mean, we're. I mean, I'm talking about as a society, a society, um, and that's this at the society level. Okay, <clears throat> uh, we learn how to live, but we do not understand what life is, or you can say the purpose of life. Right. We know, I mean, you know, all the things that we learn, uh, you know, we, we can know how to how to make money, how to uh, build things, how to uh, increase our comfort and enjoyment. But what is the purpose of life? Uh, what, what is life? You know, um, you know, if we don't know what that is, then what are we doing? We're kind of like beating around the bush kind of with aimlessly, okay, not knowing where we're going. Uh, we go to the moon and back and conquer space with ease, but we find it difficult to visit our neighbors. <laughs> so this is, yeah, I mean, again, this is all, so you can see a lot of this stuff is all about, oh, science, technology, knowledge, all these things that can help us conquer the external world <laughs> um, and even outer space. but. In terms of human relations, morals, uh, we're very uh, deficient in that, in that area. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's like we're all strangers and there's, you know, social media, right? It was supposed to bring people together, but actually it seems to have the opposite effect. I mean, people, yeah, they are more connected in a way, but there's, there's no more face-to-face -face, uh, meetings, you know, no, no more face-to-face -face people you know, getting together and just hanging out, uh, having fun. I mean, the you know, friends today are, are t like teenagers today. I mean, it's like they're in the room all day. They're on the phone or whatever to chat. You know, uh, and and that's how they communicate. And so there's there's lacking uh, in basic. You know, they're probably lacking in basic uh, proprieties or etiquette. Uh, you know, manners, that kind of thing, when, when you actually meet people face to face uh, in person. So, um, but yeah, and then so, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, we don't really talk to people uh, anymore, not not directly. It's so that that's kind of then. So, so it's actually, you know, there's this distance, there's this distance that's building up and that's getting getting further and further apart, actually. Uh, so we cleaned up air pollution, but we polluted our heart and mind. Okay, so, well, air pollution actually, uh, maybe in some places got cleaned up, but other places getting worse. Um, but anyways, yeah, but our heart and mind is also getting polluted by all the, the junk, the garbage that's out there, right? Uh, yeah, okay, you know, the internet, sure, anything goes, you can find anything you want there. There's a lot of garbage there, but even in schools or society as a whole, what we are taught, what people tell us, uh, there's a lot of garbage there too. And so we polluted um, our hearts and minds, <clears throat> you know, especially so it's like we live in a capitalist society and these, uh, I guess you can say special interests, businesses, right? They wanna sell a product. <laughs> and then, so they're gonna sell you, they're gonna tell you all sorts of stuff, say, oh, you need this, you need that. Uh, so you have to buy this. <laughs> um, you know, it's polluting our hearts and minds. I mean, uh, and not to mention like politicians, all, all that, all right? Uh, and then we have the power to split the atom, but we cannot eliminate prejudice and arrogance. Okay, so yeah, in terms of, again, science, technology, you're very advanced, but there's some basic things uh, in, you know, between humans, human beings, the relationships that we, we can't see or the 
human people's views, right? Their perspective, their uh, opinions. <laughs> this, we can't seem to get rid of those, those bad things like prejudice and arrogance. Um, it's, that's kind of sad, okay? <clears throat> the wealth in our bank account multiplies, but the value of human life progressively diminishes. All right, so this is, you know, we're kind of getting towards the, the point. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, more money. Yep, everyone makes more, can make more money. But what about, I mean, that's the value of like these, these material assets that we have. But what about the value of a human life? Okay, um, you know, we treat humans as if they are just objects. Okay, now, I'm not saying that everyone does, but because you know we we tend to objectify human life when uh, we put the emphasis on all these other material things, and we think these material things are more important, right? Uh, so if people are someone is willing to kill another human being just to get something, right? A material thing, some you know an iPhone or uh, a watch or whatever, or, or Nike sneakers, um, they're willing to kill someone for that. They're, they're valuing that object, that thing, more than a human life. That's, that's very sad. So, yes, uh, that's the question. You know, what's wrong with this picture? What's causing this problem? All right, so basically, you know, our values, the values that we have are distorted. You can say values, uh, you know, it's like, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the value, what, what, what we think is important, okay, what we think is valuable or, or worthy, that is kind of distorted. Uh, it's, and it's generally, it's distorted by, uh, the outside, uh, from the outside, right? The, the forces of society, uh, you know, again, businesses, special interests, uh, maybe even government, um, but other people, you know, kind of telling us all these things. And we hear it enough times that maybe we start to believe it. Um, so, and you know, so our mind is also polluted by ideological garbage. So, you know, various ideas, uh, so you have these very uh, conservative views or very right-wing views or, very, or even liberal on the very liberal side, you know, it's just extreme views. Uh, these things are very dangerous. Um, we can see that, especially in, in this country um, where we have a very great big divide between the two sides um, and it seems like it just gets worse. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of garbage there. Um, the more advanced, that science right, and technology is, the more impoverished our heart and mind is. That's true. So the focus, our attention, our focus, uh, where we place that value is in science and technology, right? It's like, oh yeah, Apple, right? Or, or any of these big tech companies, it's like, wow, yeah, invest in that. And hey, you can make money. <clears throat> um, you know, the next best thing, they're gonna come out with the next best thing, the next iPhone, the next whatever, uh, that's gonna change the world. Well, eh, <laughs> did it really? I mean, it, it, it's, you know, I, I don't think the, the, any of these technology really help us. I mean, they, they kind of help in certain ways, but ultimately, as, like we saw uh, in that list earlier, that yeah, there's there's a lot of things that it doesn't solve, okay, in terms of human relationships, human morality, and that from that side, uh, you know, science and technology cannot fix, right? So that's why, um, because of that focus on on those things, uh, which basically we're talking about it's material things, um, then people's lives, right? Uh, become less important, okay? And so, you know, and what is true happiness? Okay, now, uh, we say, <clears throat> you 
we say that, right, as long as I'm happy, right, I can do anything I want. Hey, life should be enjoyed, right? Enjoy the moment. Do not waste our youth. I right? do our best to surpass and pre prevail over others so that we can stand out. Right? That's 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 what we're being told or being taught today. It's like, yeah, you know, you need to do better. You need to be better than everyone else. Okay, so uh, and you know, it gets to the point where. Uh, if, obviously, if you take that to the extreme, then, you know, maybe you start doing things that you shouldn't do to achieve that, okay? Um, but, you know, this is all about, yeah, this is, it's all about me, right? Uh, I want to have fun. I want to enjoy myself. Um, and what the hell with everyone else, okay? So I'll do whatever I want. Hey, man, I want to have my gun. I want to go shoot. Uh, you, you know, you can't take that right away from me, you know, it's, it's uh, so that's, that's, there's something wrong with that. Um, so this, you know, I, ideological garbage has really polluted our minds. <clears throat> now, so human functionality, right, as a human being, right, it's, it's reduced, and the human values, or you can say maybe the value of humanity, right, has also weakened. Right, the common person uses his limited time to pursue and do what he should not do while neglecting to do the meaningful things that he should do in life. Right, again, so pursuing all these things because they think those material things, the gadgets, whatever technology is more important. Uh, so, you know, you, you hear, you hear uh, the richest man in the world saying, hey, he, he can colonize Mars. But, you know, yeah, he has the technolog technological know-how to do that. But he's just going to be exporting the world's problems, the, hum the, the, problem of the problems of society over to Mars, <laughs> okay? Because he's not addressing that aspect. He's only talking about the technology. So, so that is why the world is in the bad shape that it is in today, all right? Um, and, you know, and th that's, that's unfortunate, but that's uh, where things are going. All right, so there's a saying that people will never decipher or understand it, right? And that it is the words of the truth, okay? Um, yeah, a lot of people, they don't understand the truth. They don't realize the truth. Uh, you know, since the ancient times, the saints and sa the sages uh, they were talking about the truth, but not many people understood it, okay? And that's why we have problems today. Uh, there is a type of water that people can never use up. That is the water of wisdom. Yeah, so that's what we need to have, um, this, this wisdom, okay? Uh, the, there's a type of person that people will never forget. And that is, you know, what we call a saint or a Buddha or immortal. Okay, so, so what they've achieved, what they've done was very outstanding, very different from what most people, the common person, ordinary person does. And that's what makes them stand out. Now, obviously, you can say, well, you know, they're also <laughs> these very evil people who have committed such great atrocities uh, against crimes against humanity. Uh, that they stand out too, but in a different way, okay? And they, they it's actually, they, people want to forget those people, okay? <laughs> they don't wanna, uh, okay, so, um, but we're talking about, you know, saints, Buddhists, immortals. We, you know, people look up to them, admire them, right? They respect them uh, for what they've done, right? Because, you know, basically you can say their quality is that the main quality is that they are selfless, okay? And they are, they only do or say things for the good of others. Now, so this topic, you know, tries to, hopes to examine and analyze the correct, you can say the correct view, perspective, outlook, at, or attitude of a cultivator's life, okay? So how do we eliminate this I ideological garbage? Um, and make good use of our wisdom water, right? Which we have an infinite amount of, you never use that up, right? That wisdom is not something that we can use up. 
uh, we can stimulate our inner latent, which is you know dormant or hidden potential, right? We can perform merits, establish our our words, our you know you can say uh, our yeah you can say our integrity, okay? Nurture the, our virtues and be a saint and be known for generations. Right? This is how we do not come into the uh, to the world and waste our life in vain, right? So uh, the ordinary person pursues all those material things and in the end, they leave with nothing, right? And they, they really haven't left their mark on the world. They haven't made much of a difference. I mean, it means I say, oh, okay. So people who invented some of these, these technologies that we use, yes, they, they, they had a very big impact on the world on our lives, the way we live our lives. But, uh, you know, it, in the end, it, it's, it's, uh, it, can, it, it will be forgotten <laughs> after many generations, right? Um, because, you know, there's always something new, newer that comes out, okay? So it's not, no one has invented the thing that is the, 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 that uh, no one else, I mean, that, uh, you know, so technology, Right, it, it's basically, uh, as soon as you invent it, it's obsolete, all right? Someone else is gonna come up with something better, right? Now, so, so but Buddha, for example, or what he taught, what he realized, what, okay, uh, is the truth. It's, it's, there's nothing better than that, okay? So no one can, you know, uh, one up the Buddha. <laughs> okay. Now, obviously, you know, they say all, you know, the other saints and the morals. Yeah. They, they, they're all basically saying the same thing. Okay. So, so it's not like one is more uh, better than the other. They're all talking about that same truth. Okay. So, but you know, the lives that they lived, uh, what they taught is really, that is the most important thing. Um, and they did not come into this world in vain, even Though they may have sacrificed their lives, they died early, you know, young, they didn't live a long life, but look at their impact, their influence on the world, on the people uh, thousands of years later, right? So that is what's more important. And then, so you can say that, yeah, they left, uh, lived very meaningful lives and uh, they did definitely did not waste their time waste their life here uh, in vain, like most people do, okay? All right, so, oh. Right. Uh, so what exactly is life, right? Um, uh, yeah, you can say, you know, we're talking about, we're gonna be talking about some allegories or metaphors, you know, similes and parables maybe, okay, so of life. So what exactly is life? What are we pursuing? Uh, you know, if we cannot realize this, right, <laughs> we don't know what, then our lives will be lived in a, uh, in the Chinese, it's <laughs> these three characters all sound, have this mang, 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 okay, they all have the same uh, sound. It's basically busy, unclear, or confused, and blind, in a blind manner, okay? Um, or, or you can say, you know, like, you can say uh, unclear. You can say, yeah, yeah, basically, you can say ignorant, all right? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, let's use this uh, following story, a parable, you can say, uh, to reflect on ourselves and the meaning of our life. Okay, so it's this parable of this businessman and fisherman. You probably heard of this before, but all right. So there is this American businessman. He's sitting on the pier in a small fish, fishing village on the coast of Mexico, right? So he was watching this fisherman rowing his boat towards the pier, coming back to shore. Uh, the fisherman had caught several large yellowfin tuna. Right? Seeing this, the businessman complimented the fisherman on this high quality you know, or valuable catch and asked how long it took to catch all these fish. Right? Uh, the fisherman replied that it didn't really take very long. Uh, the businessman then said to the fisherman, Right? If you stay out longer, right, then you can catch even more fish. Uh, the fisherman disagreed, saying, well, you know, the fish that I caught, 
uh, are already enough for my family's needs. So I don't need to catch any more. Uh, then the businessman asks, you know, so what do you do during the rest of your day? Um, then the fisherman explained, me? Uh, every day I sleep until I get up naturally. I go out to the sea and catch a few fish. I come back and play with my children. Then I take a siesta, which is, you know, like an afternoon nap with my, with my wife. At dusk, I go into the village to drink some wine, play the guitar and sing with my buddies, right? Uh, so as you can see, I have a busy and fulfilling day, <laughs> okay? Uh, the businessman, you know, he disagreed with that. And he says, uh, so he tried to kind of help the fisherman with some suggestions. So he says, look, I have an MBA from Harvard University, right? So I can definitely help you. And this is what you should do. You should spend more time catching more fish. Then you can make more money, right? Selling the extra fish and save up to buy a bigger boat, right? Naturally with a bigger boat, you'll be able to catch more fish. Therefore, you will be able to sell more fish after that, right? So thereafter, then you will be able to acquire a fleet of fishing boats, right? Then you won't have to sell your fish to the fishmongers. You know, those are the people who basically kind of the middlemen, right? Who sell the fish to turn around and sell the fish again to, places or people, um, but rather you can sell your fish directly to the processing plants or the, or the canneries, right? Afterwards, you can open up your own cannery, right? In this way, you can control the entire production process from, uh, from you know, the catch all the way to the marketing of the, uh, the final product, right? Then you will be able to leave this small fishing village and move to Mexico City and later to Los Angeles and finally to New York, right? Make it big, right, in, in the Big Apple, right? So you can manage uh, your ever-expanding business from New York. Uh, the fisherman asks, well, how much time will I have to spend to achieve this? And the businessman replied, uh, it'll take about 15 to 20 years. Uh, the fisherman asked, and then what? The businessman laughed and says, ah, then you can be a king at home, right? When the time comes, you bring your company public and sell company shares to the investing public. That's when you've made it big, right? You can make millions. Wow. The fisherman asked again, yeah, and then what? Ah, the businessman replied, well, at that point, you can retire. Right? You can retire in a small fishing village by the sea, sleep every day until you naturally wake up, go out and catch a few fish, play with your kids, then take a siesta with your wife. At dusk, you can go into the village to drink some wine, play the guitar and sing with your buddies. So, so the fisherman had his doubts and said, well, isn't that what I already have now? <laughs> yeah, so basically life, right? You know, what are we really pursuing in life? A quiet life is what many people want, but they end up doing the opposite, right? So what are you doing, my friend? Okay, so, so yeah, even so it's kind of like what the businessman was proposing is in the end, it's the same result as what uh, the fisherman already had. That was the life that he already had, but you know, he had to spend an extra 15 to 20 years to, to get there, it's kind of odd. Uh, of course, there's a slight difference. He had more money, but hey, you know, it was a lot of hard work too. But, and, you know, so he basically wasted that, he would have wasted all that 15 to 20 years of time that he wouldn't have been able to be with his family, playing with his kids, et cetera. Enjoy, you know, kind of having that kind of life. Uh, so th uh, there's this, okay. Now there's this other story uh, of a boy from a wealthy family who used his family's gold, right, uh, to make gold pellets, uh, which he used to shoot at, you know, basically hunt birds, right? okay? So now we would think that this boy is foolish, right? Because the gold pellets are certainly worth a lot more than the birds that he's gonna hunt. And he will not always hit the birds. So, you know, he might be wasting these gold pellets. Uh, but now, but isn't life like this, right? Mundane people use their precious lives to pursue fame, fortune, and power, right? They exchange their priceless lives for things of limited value, 
just like the foolish boy who was using gold pellets to hunt for birds. So life is lost in ignorance. Right? Therefore, right, we should emulate the spirit of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to demonstrate the value of life, to give the invisible, priceless, and infinite love. We have all heard the story of the three blind men and the elephant, right? So life is like the, the blind men touching the elephant in that each one touches a different part of the elephant, right? Uh, and they each will have a different view or perspective, right? So, um, so the same thing, everyone kind of experiences life differently. And so they have a kind of a different perspective on life as well. Okay, so here, life is a caf like a cafeteria. Uh, nobody is going to give us success, right? We must strive for it ourselves, right? Ancient virtues, uh, our ancient virtuous worthies said, right? So honeybees, they collect pollen from thousands of flowers to produce only a drop of sweet honey. A prospector, a miner, right, dredges thousands of tons of sand to get a pure uh, one speck of pure gold. Uh, from many thousands of fragrant flowers, uh, can a drop of perfume be squeezed out, right? From the thousands of oysters in the sea, can a single bright pearl be found? Right? So therefore, you know, what we expect to harvest, we must sow or plant, right? So, you know, a lot of things, yeah, obviously it takes a lot of effort and work uh, to get something out of it. Um, so there was this college student, okay? Uh, he was studying architectural engineering, but because uh, both of his parents were always busy working, right? His uncle helped raise him, including, you know, paying for his tuition. Uh, after graduation, his uncle told him, I just so happen, it just so happens that I want to build a house, right? Now, since you are an architectural engineer, you know, you know, you can design it, right? So I, I'll let you take responsibility for the whole process from design to construction, you know, as a way, it's, it would be a way to show off your abilities and strengths, right? And what you've learned. Now, I will give you $2 million, you know, or whatever to complete the house, right? So do your best and let me know when it's completed. All right, so then the nephew, you know, he was very happy and grateful for his uncle's fostering and support. And he went all out to design and build this house. Now, unfortunately, not long after he got started, and he discovered that there was a there was a yeah discrepancy, a difference between his you know, perfect blueprint design and the actual construction materials being being used. Okay, uh, so he switched to inferior building materials, uh, and due to his negligence, he squandered his remaining budget. Now, the thing is, he also lacked supervision and was often lazy. Uh, so he thought that his uncle, you know, was, was you know, he's, his uncle doesn't know anything about construction. Uh, and so he wouldn't know where he was actually, you know, cutting corners in, <laughs> in the labor or in the materials. Uh, after all, you know, the superficial appearance of the house was exactly as he had designed it, right? Um, and not to mention that his uncle, you know, I, still also trusted him completely. <clears throat> now, so when the house was completed, right, it was very elegant and stylish, right? And the design was very novel and practical. Right? His uncle was full of praise and said, nephew, you did not disappoint me. This house proved your knowledge, ability, and hard work. You can now stand on your own. I right? considered this house a graduation gift from your uncle. <laughs> Right? So at that moment, his nephew became extremely depressed because he knew how poorly constructed it was with inferior materials and inherently, it's inherently problem, pro problematic, right? But he did not expect this house to be built for himself, right? So, you know, this story tells us that just like in, this, in that case, well, he was given this, this house, uh, you know, the, the responsibility and the, the, the resources to build this house, you know, God Baumu, also gave us, gave everyone the ingenuity 
right, through our wisdom, through our intelligence, uh, to design our own life, right? Some people waste their time uh, using the worst materials for their own enjoyment, right? But at the end of life, just like the uncle gave the house to his nephew, you now God will say, hey, we built or created this life, our own life, right? So you can say, I mean, that's kind of karma, okay, <laughs> that uh, we, we end up, uh, you know, so we, you know, the thing is, we don't realize what we're doing is, is not good for us, right? All the pursuit of all the material things and all, all that and neglecting our, our what's inside of us, okay? Um, but in the end, again, you know, that's, uh, yeah, you can say that that is karma. Um, you know, we end up paying for it ourselves, okay? So that's why it really does pay to, to know and understand the truth uh, and then we can hopefully avoid uh, going down that path of suffering. Okay. Now life is lo like a dream, right? Awake until death. Okay. Uh, now a dream clearly has six paths of reincarnation, right? But, uh, but when we are awake, right? The dream world kind of disappears. It's all empty. Right. Let me say, you know, six. I mean, it's basically the dream seems very real, right? Anything, everything happens. Things that happen in a dream seem like they are real. So it's like all things can happen. You know, our lives. We can have all different types of lives. Um, okay, but when we wake up, it's it's all gone. It's nothing's there anymore. Now, from childhood to growing up, we have experienced dreams in which someone, or maybe it's a monster or something, was chasing us and trying to kill us, right? But unfortunately, uh, I mean, but fortunately, uh, we always wake up in time to avoid being killed, right? Um, the feeling must have been one of great relief, right? Thank goodness, it was only a dream. But we also may have had a dream in which we won the lottery, right? And, or, you know, something very good happened and we woke up very happy, hoping that it was not just a dream, right? So actually dreams in life, and dreams in our sleep are quite similar, right? In one case, regardless of what we were experiencing, you know, whatever it's happiness, anger, grief, joy, etc., right? At the time, it ceases to exist at that moment when we open our eyes, right? We wake, that's, we wake from the dream. In the other case, all our happiness and suffering in life comes to an end and has no meaning when our eyes close for the last time. That's death. Right? So dreams and life are created by the mind and dreams when we sleep are also a function of the mind. And this function actually manifests according to karma. So yeah, I lectured you also said that uh, basically the, uh, the dreams, things in our, in our dreams, they relate to our past karma. Um, I mean, although, I mean, there's, it's, our dreams are kind of sometimes very weird, but um, but anyways, I guess they, they do, uh, if, if, we only, if only we knew how to interpret them correctly, but uh, yeah. All right, so uh, some more. So life is also like a fox, uh, right? It's, okay, so its stomach is empty. Okay, so there's this fox, right? Um, and it's hungry and it, and it comes to this vineyard and so it enters the vineyard and he's starting to eat the grapes, right? But at the same time, you know, he's too worried about being caught. And so he couldn't really eat that much nor enjoy the grapes, right? He's constantly looking around, making sure that the owner doesn't show up and catch him. Uh, and so finally, when he leaves the vineyard, uh, he says, you know, I come into the vineyard on an empty stomach, but I also left the vineyard on an empty stomach and wasted hours in there. So, you know, everyone is born naked and empty handed. And no matter if we are famous, wealthy, or powerful, when we take our last breath, we leave empty handed. You know, just like Alexander the Great, right? When he died, uh, or just before he died, he told those close to him, to say, well, you know, stick my hands out of the coffin, right? To show that, you know, when we die, there's nothing that we can take with us, okay? So, 
So not only, right, can we not take like these material wealth and possessions, but we also cannot take our fame and glory, okay? So those things, so we lose everything when we die. Uh, now, okay, so now this, this other parable here. So, you know, life is like a series or a succession of empty joys, um, or you can say, you know, rejoicing or, you know, celebrating too early or too soon, okay? Uh, so there was this king, who promised to reward a musician 3,000 tales of gold, right? If, if he can perform successfully and make the king happy. But as the musician performed his best and was about to collect his reward, right? The king broke his promise, right? When the musician asked why, the king replied, well, your performance was actually very wonderful, without a doubt. And it made me very happy. But after per the performance was over, you know, I could not help but feel the disappointment of the empty joy. Okay. So that's like, you know, yeah, I mean, while you're, while the king was listening to the music, wow, it made him happy, felt good. But once the music was over, you know, it's like he felt, felt sad again. He felt disappointment that it's, it's, <laughs> it's no longer, he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't hearing the, the music anymore. Okay. So therefore, I will not reward you with the 3,000 tails of gold and let you get a taste of the empty joy. So it's a fair deal, <laughs> right? So he, the king is letting the musician feel the same, same thing, right? Because there is this anticipation of getting the reward from the musician. But, but you know, so he felt good about that. But then now he's, he's disappointed. So therefore, the immortal saints have said, a seascape painting has no uh, wind and space to create waves. An embroidered uh, flower, although beautiful, has no fragrance. Right. So this, you know, uh, saying is, is what it's speaking to: the illusion and the unreality of life. Right. Um, everything, uh, just like we were saying, the the dreams in life, right, or the things that happening in life, in the end. It, I mean, when we die, it, it, that all ends. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, there's 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 the karma that we we take with us. Karma and merits, okay, virtue. Those are the only things that that we we keep, right? Everything else is is gone. Okay. Uh, we don't have any anything else. So so basically, yeah, life. You know, it's illusory. Nothing nothing lasts in life. Okay, so life is like the uh, is is the creation and transcendence of a series of peaks in life. Okay, so what <clears throat> are we talking about here? Um, you know, there were uh, okay. So talking about these this parable of these two scholars, uh, they went to Beijing together, right, to take an exam. Uh, one night they stayed in a long abandoned temple. Now, because of the cold weather. Right, they burned a, a pile of firewood to keep warm, and the flames were ablaze. Right, just then, one of the scholars watched the burning firewood and sighed. You know, life is like this pile of firewood. Right, when it first started burning, the moisture within the wood evaporates, and then a raging flame emerges and burns with enthusiasm. But in the end, only a pile of ashes remains, and a few light wisps of smoke. And people start, uh, you know, so and people start off clumsily in the world, right? Then run vigorously until they are exhausted and stop. Okay, so what remains in the end is just a few handfuls of ashes, and uh, and a fresh burial mound. You know, what can you take with you? Okay, so yeah, so he's kind of this guy's kind of expressing the the same that view that well, yeah, you know, you start off. Uh, in, in life, you know, maybe it can burn pretty brightly, but then in the end, you know, there's, there's all you have is left is, are the ashes. There's nothing, there's nothing left. Now, the other scholar was grinding the, an ink stone, okay? Uh, so back then, you know, the, we don't get instant ink, right? We have, the, they had to, it's like a, the stick, the stone that they add water and then you rub it and then uh, you get ink out of it. 
And having uh, heard what his friend said, right, he had a different insight. And he went on to say, you know, I think uh, life is like the ink, okay? Uh, you see the colorless and odorless water when ground with this ink stone, it gradually emits an elegant fragrance and turns into thick ink. Then it wets the brush and leaves its mark on the canvas, right? This gives people boundless reveries or daydreams and, and the painting is passed down and enjoyed for ages. While people start off with a dull life, right? A great creation can have a lasting legacy and influence, right? Although the water evaporates and disappears in the end, it enables the rhythm of the ink to create a meaningful painting that can be passed down through the ages. Okay. So life is indeed as short as the light of the firewood, but it is bright and splendid. And the spirit of life is like the ink that can be immortalized through creation or, or you know, creating things. Right? In ancient times, people of wisdom have always made good use of themselves to develop the infinite potential of life and to create a higher value of life. So how are we going to make good use of our lives? Okay. Right, so these are, you, you can say that these are kind of two views of life. Uh, one is kind of, the first one is kind of, you can say pessimistic in that you say in the end, there's nothing. Uh, you start with nothing, you end with nothing. Uh, the second view is more like, yeah, you start with, you can say you start with nothing, but you create something out of life. Okay, so, and, and that can be immortalized, that spirit of, of life, of what you created uh, can remain, right? So it's not uh, that you're, I mean, yeah, of course, we ourselves, you know, cannot take anything with us, but at least there's, there's this legacy, this spirit that's left behind for others, for future generations. Okay, so that's the difference. And this is, this is so we're getting to the point, uh, you know, what we're talking about, the creating this value uh, for life, of, of life. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Oh, All right. Okay, next thing. Um, so life uh, is like a diamond. Uh, so it's like a piece of diamond, right? The ore, uh, I guess the diamond ore, right? It must be chiseled and polished in order to transform it into a sparkling diamond. So these are, you know, these, you can say it's like, a, these are like metaphors, okay? Um, same way, you know, in life, we have to experience things, ups and downs, right? Uh, you know, if everything we experienced was just good, it's like we, we were never tested, we never suffered in any way. Um, I don't think we would uh, achieve as much and we, we probably wouldn't become enlightened, right? We, you know, so if you look at all the, like the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, you know, saints, sages, right? Their lives were not, uh, you know, all, uh, so, you know, like a very, very smooth. I mean, usually they there's they they were poor or you know they had all sorts of difficulties in life. But uh, that's really what makes us. You can say that builds character, right? I mean, there's a, a saying that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Okay, so so we have to uh, experience those things. If we don't experience those things, then you know it's like if you if you uh, let's say if we were, you know, born in a very wealthy family, you know, we you know, brought up with a silver spoon in our mouth, right? Uh, and we don't have to do anything, right? It, it, yeah, it, in the end, you know, I, it's, it's hard to say that we would actually accomplish much or make anything out of ourselves, right? Um, and so, so that's 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 different. So therefore, you know, there has to be this, we have to be polished, we have to be refined. We say, you know, as a cultivator, we have to be refined, okay? Uh, we have to be transformed, okay? Uh, all right, now life is also, uh, it's a sacred responsibility, okay? 
uh, that we must face and bear on our shoulders solemnly, okay, or seriously. Um, do not be discouraged. Do not be stumped by sin and evil. Uh, we must go forward and upward until we reach our destination. All right. So again, you know, whatever, you know, a lot of difficulties, a lot of hardships. Um, uh, these are, again, everything will pass, but we have to have that will. We have to that, that determination to want to uh, overcome that and carry on, right? And, and to, to therefore uh, elevate ourselves, okay? To get to the high, next higher level. It's like, you know, you can say like we're, we're climb, trying to climb up uh, that these stairs and, you know, sometimes there's something blocking the way, but, you know, doesn't, that, that shouldn't prevent us from continuing, finding a way to overcome that and to continue our climb. Okay. Uh, all right. And you know, so life is also like a long distance torch relay, right? We take the torch from the hands of the forerunner, the, the, the person who was running before us, um, and we brighten the torch while carrying it forward over a, a considerable distance and then hand it off to the next torch bearer, right? So afterward, we can rest at peace, at ease, right? With a, basically with a clear conscience and quietly fade into the darkness, okay? So, so, you know, what this is saying is also that we all have our part, right? So it's not like, oh, we have to do everything. We have to try to be everything, try to do everything, right? We do our part. We do whatever part, whatever we are capable of doing, we do. And then everyone does their part, right? So, uh, and if we all did that, right, then, can all be successful. Uh, but, you know, especially for us, let's say, like in the Tao, um, you know, we have this universal salvation, this mission, right, to propagate the Tao. Uh, yeah, we, we all do our part. We can't do everything. We can't, we can't, you know, it's impossible for any one of us to, to propagate Tao to everyone and save everyone in the world, right? Uh, we save who we can, okay, who have that affinity with us. Um, uh, and, and that's, that's all we have to do. Okay. Uh, so, so, you know, don't, don't, don't feel like, oh, you know, it's, it's such a grand, a great big um, mission or responsibility, you know, then, then we feel like, ah, that's, that's there's so much pressure or stress that uh, we won't, then we, we kind of, we, we are kind of, uh, um, it makes it difficult for us to to kind of move ahead, but so you know, take it a little at a step at a time. Um, don't think that big, right? Okay. Uh, so how can we live a true, uh, good and beautiful life? Okay. Uh, oh yeah, that's the Zen San Mei. Okay. Um, and you know, what kind of outlook? on life should we have in order to be meaningful and not live a life in vain, right? A cultivator should have the following four outlooks on life in order to achieve success in reaching our true destiny. You can say, you know, the eternal destiny of heaven, okay. Um, oh, okay. So that first is, I guess, what we'll call this value-creating outlook on life. Um, so basically creating value in life. Okay. Not just, yeah. I mean, we say creating for, for who actually it's creating value for others. When we create value for others, we create it for ourselves too. So it's, it's creating. So that's why I just say creating value. Um, and you know, so death, uh, yeah. So, uh, death is the inevitable end of life, right? But how we die is actually up to us. Right? We can choose to die any way we want. Um, you know, like maybe we go out with a bang, right? Or we can die quietly, uh, right? The value of life is not measured in how long we live, but rather in how or the quality of living according to the truth, goodness, and beauty, All right? So this is, this is actually, you can say truth, goodness, beauty is like the expression or manifestation of the three treasures, okay? So, you know, expressing or manifesting the three treasures in, in our lives. <clears throat> um, 
right? And, you know, so, and seeking, you know, the eternal from the limited, right? So we have this limited physical life, but what is eternal? That is our goal, right? The, that eternal life, you can say, uh, that, that immortal life. <clears throat> uh, that's what we should be seeking. How do we get there? That transcendence, okay? Um, and seeking the extraordinary from the ordinary. So we have to be extraordinary. We have to live an extraordinary life, or we should strive to live be extraordinary, okay? Not be the ordinary common person that, uh, that really makes no uh, difference in the world, okay? So uh, we should make a difference, right? This is what makes a truly meaningful life, right? Master Yen Hui, right? The, the young disciple of Confucius, right? He had a short life, um, something like 31 years, something like that, right? But he was definitely a saint, right? Uh, and then uh, well, there's, a, there's this, uh, other, there are many examples, right? Or even you can say like Jesus, okay? So obviously he was only, what, was 33 or something, right? So, uh, you know, living a long life, right? Has no bearing on having a meaningful life. And we can say that, you know, these people, uh, you can say these saints and, or like, like Jesus, Buddha, I mean, well, Buddha lived a relatively long life, but Jesus, I mean, you know, everyone, I think everyone will agree that he lived a very extraordinary life uh, and definitely uh, a meaningful life, right? Because otherwise we wouldn't be, you know, you know, people, there wouldn't be a religion built around his teachings, okay? Um, and people wouldn't be following that, his teachings. All right, so, so that is what is truly meaningful. All right, so, you know, death is inevitable, okay, but the spirit has longevity, right? Uh, Lao Tzu, you know, in, uh, in the Tao Te Ching, okay, so he says, you know, those who die, you know, that's the physical death, but, but do not perish. You know, that's in terms of the spirit, they have longevity. Those who do not lose their foundation or essence, they endure, right? The physical body dies, but the spirit lives on, right? So that uh, uh, Ye Master Yen Wei, right? His body has already returned to dust over these, yeah, you could say it's like about 2,500 years, or a little more than 2,500 years ago, right? But his words and actions, his spirit of never getting angry without good reason, okay? never repeating a mistake or fault, uh, being content in poverty while striving for virtue, right? He hears one thing and he understands it all. Okay, so he, you know, he has that insight and wisdom. This spirit lives on in the hearts and minds of others and will never be erased from memory. This is true longevity, right? So what Lao Tzu is saying that longevity, yeah, referring to this type of longevity. Now, obviously we also have the, you know, the, the you can say our immortal life, the true nature, the Buddha nature. Okay, but that, uh, but we're talking about in this world. Uh, that's the, the type of longevity we're talking about is the longevity of our spirit, right? Of how we lived our lives, uh, and that's you know as long as it is remembered in generations and later on, and people admire it, they they praise it, they they uh, respect it, and they follow, they follow it that then there is, it still lives, that spirit still lives on. Uh, most people die and their spirit does not live on. Why? Right, because they do not, they have not done anything extraordinary with their lives, right? They may have lived on in the memories of their family, but they may, uh, but that may only last for a few generations, right? You know, how many people here remember or know about their great 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 grandparents probably most people don't even know their names okay so um so the extraordinary is the uncommon right what we have learned about Tao is that it is extraordinary not in the physical sense but in the spiritual sense right it is what sets master yen Hui and any other saint or sage apart from common people right? these people have had a lasting influence on other people 
right? We know the saying, only the truth stands the test of time, right? So the longevity of spirit implies that their words and actions are true. Okay. All right, I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna stop here today um, and then we will continue and finish, finish it next week. Um, all right, yeah, this, this is about halfway, I guess. So, um, all right, uh, if I had said anything wrong uh, or not satisfactory, I asked the Buddhists for forgiveness and also asked Transforming Masters and lectures for their corrections. Thank you. <laughs>